G'day there. Today I'm going to show you how to use up the veggies out your garden and some chicken out of the backyard and make a delicious chicken pie. G'day there, I'm Dana from Fantail Valley Homestead and we are busy getting all our food ready for the kids dinner and dance happening tomorrow and one of the things I am bringing is a chicken pie. So conveniently this is largely stuff that we have grown at home ourselves and it is largely things that I can make from scratch. So I'm going to bring you along for the journey and show you how I'm going to make those. Now I'm going to be totally honest with you, we don't actually raise our own chickens here for meat very often. We have tried doing uh, the local, you know, ours are called cob, like the Cornish cross. We've tried doing that, but the grain that we can feed them, it just doesn't work out financially viable for us. And we don't have the flat space that we can run them in chicken tractors to make them pasture raised and make them so much more superior than what we have at the store. And I know this is a downfall to our current food supply here. And I know that we're using factory farming chicken, which is less than ideal and it's not what we want to be doing. And we are focusing more and more on growing our own large animals. So we have tried uh, crossing our own heritage breeds, but for us, we just found that by the time we'd paid to feed them for the six months that it took them to grow to big enough, that it just really wasn't worth it. So at the moment we are predominantly using store-bought chicken, but our goal is to supply more and more of our own meat as we're able to, for sure. So I am in the kitchen and I'm going to be making some chicken pie <laughs> with some noisy little boys in the room. I'm being joined by a toddler. Uh, my plan is with these um, that I don't have to remember to bring one of my own plates home again. They're quite a bit smaller than what I would probably make usually as a pie, so I'm going to give it a try and we'll just, I've got four. I've got four plates um, there, but I'm not convinced I will use all of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a, what's called a rough puff pastry. He's as bad as the roosters. Every time I try and talk, he talks too. So I have one and, no, two and a quarter cups of flour, 180 grams of butter, um, three quarters of a cup of water that has three teaspoons of lemon juice added to it, and half a teaspoon of baking powder. So what I'm going to do is throw it in to the food processor, which will hopefully work. Somebody has dropped the lid and it's cracked and it doesn't quite click on properly anymore, which of course tells the thing that it's not allowed to go on. So hopefully that works. Um, and so I'll just do that over there and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Basically, you just want to make a something well it's called rough puff the idea is that you end up with something that looks kind of similar to breadcrumbs that will just start coming together so you don't want to add so much water you don't want to add so much water that it turns into a big boggy dough in the food processor because then your pastry will just be too wet the other thing this recipe doesn't have in it which i'm actually going to add is about half a teaspoon of salt if you see here, I have wedged this piece of the lid over with a folded up piece of cardboard. So I'm going to see if that works. So the lid thing did work. I think I accidentally slopped a little bit too much water in because I managed to make a gooey dough. So I'm going to pop this into a bowl and cover it and pop it into the fridge until I need it so it'll be nice and chilled and hopefully easy to roll out and not so sticky. One of my big things about growing your own food is you need to be able to work out ways of actually using it as well. There's no point in growing it if you also don't eat it. 
and I think this chicken pie is a really good way of using up, especially when you start harvesting like lots of little pieces, um, like if you get a handful of beans or a handful of peas, or you've only got one or two carrots ready, this is a really good way of using up those small amounts and sharing them around the family. So today I have got three sticks of celery out of the garden, a couple of carrots that I've already cut up, and I'm gonna cut up a couple of onions they are starting to sprout, but they will be perfectly fine in this basically a stew mixture. And the other thing I've done is I've popped a chicken into the oven to roast. Um, the reason I've chosen to roast it rather than just boil it in a pot is because I think you get a much nicer flavor. If you are using all the nice wee browned bits off the bottom of the pan, you're gonna get a much tastier pie than if uh, you just are boiling it in a pot all together, more like stew. And also it means that you can use the whole bird, which is, especially if you're raising your own chickens at home, generally we tend to pop them in the freezer as uh, whole birds, as opposed to portioning them all out. And I think a pie is nice when it's got a mixture of the brown meat and the white meat as well. So I've got them actually in the wood fire stove. We've had it running since the kids got up at goodness knows what time this morning. So it's nice and warm in there. So I've popped, actually popped two chickens in there, uh, but one will be for the pies and one will just be for eating. I'm gonna cut up the onion, the celery, the carrots, and some garlic, all grown from the garden. This is a perfect time that you can also add corn or peas or beans. Um, any of those little bits, even bits of broccoli or cauliflower if you are so inclined. And I'm just gonna fry them off in a pan and some butter. And then once the chicken is ready, I'll make a bit of gravy in the bottom of the pan and pull apart the chicken and throw it all together to make a pie filling. Now these are onions that turns out aren't particularly good at keeping. So. There are different varieties of onions and some of them store better than others and these are I believe the Spanish sweet onion and it turns out they're not storing very well. On the outside these bits that are growing are still edible and the inside isn't mushy or rotten so I can still use them but it just it's a little disappointing looking in my cupboard seeing all these sprouts so they definitely need used sooner rather than later. peeling the skins off and then we'll cut them all up. The other big thing we've been working on that we'll be working on this weekend is we need to contain our goats. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen any of our previous videos about our goats but our property is really 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 steep and is covered in a horrible prickly plant called gorse which the goats actually don't mind eating which I find kind of amazing, but that's one of the reasons we have goats is because that is what we have for them to be eating. Uh, but one of them, River, is, the, I'm pretty sure all the girls are pregnant, but River is looking like she is about to pop. And she is the one that had uh, the wee baby that we named Trouble last year. Trouble was very large, he was a singleton, and he got stuck and unfortunately she birthed him during the night while we weren't there and um, he got stuck for a couple of hours and he ended up with a very swollen face and a very swollen tongue and we ended up having to tube feed him and unfortunately I think he must have aspirated on the tube feeding he refused to take a bottle even once his tongue went down and we think he developed a chest infection. So unfortunately we lost him, which was really sad. And we are quite determined to be there when she has her next lot of babies. It definitely looks like she's got twins this time rather than one massive singleton. And also it turns out that one of the reasons she had one massive baby is, could well be related to an iodine deficiency. So we have also given them all iodine medication uh, recently uh, at the vet's suggestion because they're pregnant. Uh, so we are hoping that we'll have much better luck with our babies this year. The upside to processing the Kuni Kunis 
that we processed a couple of weeks ago is that the little paddock at the top of our property that we originally fenced off for basically baby watching with goats is now empty and it has had a little bit of grass regrowth in the last couple of weeks just with all the extra rain we've had and the rain has actually kept the frosts at bay so we've managed to actually get a little bit of grass growing up there so we have shut the goats in the top paddock um, at the moment and they tomorrow we're going to fix the fence so that we can let them through into that little paddock so we can keep a much closer eye on them now I've cut all these up with all my waffling and we're going to put these all into a pot and cook them off some tasty butter in there and then all the veggies and I'm just going to cook them until they're uh, just translucent and the carrots are almost cooked through and then I'm just going to sit it aside and wait for the chicken to be ready to go in there it is multitasking time I have fritters happening in the fryer which if you want to check out the video for that I plan on putting together a really quick short one for you um, so keep an eye out for that but I have taken the chickens out and uh, the pan is busy ready over here while the chickens were cooking I pulled some of the stock out uh, to allow the bottom of the pan to brown up as much as possible so I tipped that in with the vegetables and I'm just going to tip it back in the pan so that we can soak up all those delicious brown bits that are in the bottom of the pan on the upside the toddler has decided to do some screen time and just leave me alone so I am embracing that right now and letting them have at it I'm going to try and tip this in without too many of the veggies but I think I'm going to fail Uh, the aim of this is just to pick up all the little bits that are left on the pan that have got all the flavour. Colour is flavour, right? So I'm going to let that soak in and I'll come and give it a good couple of stirs to try and get up as much of that colour as I can. In the meantime, I think that next batch of fritters are ready for me to take out. I really really need to remember to set a timer for these things I'm terrible at remembering how long things have been in for and these ones are let's just call them dark acceptable they're fine but they're a little on the well cooked side all right now I've got all of the browning off the bottom of the pan I'm just gonna tip it back in the pot and I probably shouldn't have picked that pan up with my bare hands it is really hot And then into this pot, I'm also going to shred all the meat off one of these chickens. And again, they're quite hot. So I'm not going to really cut it into small pieces. I figure once I stir it, it will probably pretty much fall to bits. The main aim is to get the bones and the cartilage out of the meat. The rest of the meat and the remaining bones will go into some stock so they're not going to waste either can you go and help talia some of the chickens are out well it wouldn't be a day on the farm without somebody escaping so <laughs> talia asked me to lock one of the chicken doors and i totally spaced on it and forgot to do it and we have a whole lot of chickens out so they've gone down to round them up Right, next I'm just sprinkling in a couple of tablespoons of corn flour I've also tasted it for salt and pepper um, and I didn't need to add any more because I actually quite heavily salted the chickens before I put them in the oven now this is also the time if you want to add a splash of cream or anything additional that won't need too much cooking now is the time to add it and then I'm just going to bring this up to a quick boil so that it thickens and then it is ready to go in my pastry <laughs> and those two goats have just shown me where there's a massive hole in the fence we're back after that little chicken chasing ex escapade 
Now the chicken itself has thickened up significantly. I have realized we call it corn flour and a lot of the world calls it cornstarch. I have thickened it with cornstarch so that it's really thick and gloopy. This will make sure it doesn't ooze out of my pie. Now it is time to roll out the pastry. So I'm just gonna dust around a bit of flour. And I'm hoping to make two pies. So if I cut it in half, and then each of these halves you want to divide so that one is about a third for the top and the bottom is about two thirds for the bottom. Give or take some. And then I just form it into a wee bit of a disc. Add a little more flour on the top. And roll it out to fit my pie plate. Now I have discovered the downside to having a rustic, rustic shaped bench is that I really struggle to find a flat surface to do this on. It actually slopes quite a bit down there and it goes over to a hill over there. So it's not going to be the most evenly beautiful whoops, pastry. But we're going for a rustic look anyway. So I feel like that'll fit. And then I'm just going to dust all that excess flour off because you don't want a floury pie. And then my trick is you put the flour on the inside because then it just goes into the chicken mixture and worst comes to worst, it thickens it slightly more. It's not a big deal. Now what we're going to do with my wobbly pie plate is stack in about half my chicken mixture. Obviously if you're doing a bigger pie or you're just doing one pie, you'd put the whole thing in. There's no specific measurements for this, it really is. Like I've done one chicken, a couple of carrots, a couple of stalks of celery and a couple of onions. There's no reason why you can't increase or decrease that to fit however big you want it to be. And then you just get your pastry, pop it over the top. I decided I'm just going to use a bit of egg because I'm going to do an egg wash over the top anyway. So we'll just use a wee bit of egg glue around the outside edge of the pan. This will make the pastry bits stick together nicely. And then you just kind of go around and squish it all together. If there's any bits where they don't reach, that's the upside to having the extra piece. In fact, I might just fold these extra bits over. Everybody loves a bit of extra pastry, don't they? And then I'm not left with a blob of it at the end. I feel like I've been around here already. Yeah. There we go. That looks pretty, doesn't it? Pretty pie. Can you see? There we go. Whoop. Pretty pie. So. Yep, you can see. So that's ready to go in the oven. I've set it at about 180 Celsius, which is about 350 Fahrenheit. And I will cook it for probably 30 to 40 minutes or until the top looks nice and golden. And I'm gonna egg wash it so that it gets nice and golden. One thing I have been hyper aware of when our laying chickens have got to the end of their useful laying lives uh, is what we do with them after that and this chicken pie is a brilliant way of using what they call stewing chickens rather than using the chickens that you would ordinarily roast or uh, maybe portion out and cook another way this is a really good way of slow cooking those old boiler hens or old roosters that you don't want anymore this is a really delicious way that the family will happily eat them without serving up a tough chewy stringy bird. Now my job is to clean. It's a little bit better. While the pies are baking I'm going to finish up the housework and then I'll show you what they look like at the end. I'm going to be honest I find age six really hard and this is our number three that has hit the stage. His constant exuberation for life and his strong passions for what he believes to be true really does my head in sometimes. But then every now and again, he'll do something really amazing, like bring in enough firewood to fill the fire bin, or something like this. 
it just makes my heart melt to realize how much he loves us and how much he loves to help. How good do these look? I ended up cooking them for 45 minutes. joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> um, what else do I want to say? I don't know. <laughs>